What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number four of the Bottom at Christmas Challenge here with Burnley in FM19. If you missed yesterday's episode, do go check it out. A massive game at the bottom of the table between ourselves and Watford. It was a classic, but you might be wondering, Jack, why are we starting on Felipe's profile? Simple. I want to issue an apology for mispronouncing his name so horrifically so far in this series. I've been calling it kind of Kaiseido. I want to say, well, it's it, it said Kaiseido. Kaiseido. So I think I've been saying Saiseido, which is just not right. So, yeah, apologies. I believe it's Kaiseido. I think. I mean, I hope I'm right now. Otherwise, I'm apologising and not rectifying myself, which would probably sum me up pretty well when it comes to my pronunciations. But of course, last episode, two wins on the bounce away from home. Yes, one was against Plymouth, but the win against Watford, make no mistake, that was a good little result for us. You can see Torres with both the goals, of course. Uh, we have Torres available for us because we're using the J-League database add-on. I talked about this in episode one, but just as a quick recap, because I feel like it will have been mentioned in the comments of the previous video. Uh, by default, the J-League, the Japanese Football League, is an in-football manager. Um, just, I think, because Konami hold the licensing, so, you know, it's just not in the game, essentially. Uh, the Brazil research team, however, have added in hundreds, if not thousands, of the J-League players, so you can have them appear in your save game. So that's how we do have Torres here. It's kind of funny. I was uh, kind of comparing him to Kaiseido uh, before I came here. And actually, you can see when you compare the two players... Torres isn't really that much better. In fact, I don't even know if he is better. Of course, we've brought in these two guys to be our two experienced forwards. I think I feel like given the general lack of goals besides Chris Wood's contribution, we needed new kind of front men. And we've gone with two experienced players in Caicedo and in Fernando Torres. I think they can be the men to make a difference. Um, I will say, I was sat thinking about things, you know, the transfer dealings we've done so far. I feel like we've signed too many wide players. It's kind of, one of the issues with these kind of live series is that I don't get enough time to think things over. I don't get that chance, you know, to go, is this really what I want to do? Because often I'm kind of commentating and concentrating on just talking away. And I don't get to think things over always that great. So, yes, I might have signed too many wide men. I will concede it now. Of course, just as a reminder, we've got some players on the outs, including Vidra, if I'm not mistaken, who could be going to Nice on loan. Uh, of course, did did we did we sell one of Walters? We did. He's gone on a free transfer to Swansea. I'm going to be honest. I think that's probably for the best. And uh, well, with the new wide men we've got in, such as Hanani and such as Andy, I think we're going to be okay in the wide areas. You know, once we get some players back and we're at full fitness. I feel like we have an okay squad when it comes to strength and depth out wide. Obviously, Lennon's currently out injured for three to five weeks. Pion Sisto is out for 11 days to two weeks. And Goodmanson is out for six to 12 days. So he's probably not going to be back for the Southampton game. So with that, we are kind of lacking a little bit of strength and depth perhaps in the wider areas. Now, we have got Vidra leaving the club. We are in a bit of a pickle when it comes to the registration limits, you might remember. Just because we are right on the threshold. We don't have that many younger players. And there is a limit on 25 players in the Premier League. Which we are very much on the um, kind of borders of. And unfortunately for us, Walker Peters has decided to go to Sunderland. We've we've been rejected for some... Mm, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Because I was hoping we could bring him in to be a backup fullback option. What is the situation if we just look at squad depth here? Bardsley is our backup right back. And then it's Kevin Long. I mean, Long's not a bad right back, but neither of them are the players that we need for our system. Just as a reminder, we've kind of gone to the Arsenal 4-4-2 that I've been using in the network game. However, you might notice I've renamed it kind of inverted winger Burnley because it's changed a little bit. Um, I do want to get rid of some stuff, such as distributing to the fullbacks. In fact, do I want to keep that on? See, I, I've, I tweaked it a little bit just compared to the regular Arsenal tactic because this is pretty much the player roles that I've been using at Arsenal um, in the network game with Ben. But we don't have players of the same quality. So with that in mind, we can't be as kind of possession orientated. So we're going to play on the attack still. We're going to play more direct, obviously. I feel like so far during our time here, you know, we've tried we've tried a 4-4-2 kind of possession system. We've, tr we've tried a 4-4-2 kind of defensive that's parked the bus system. They've never really worked for us. 
So with that all in mind, I think we're just going to try and play attacking. We're going to try and play on the front foot because I feel like that is where a lot of our strengths lie in this team. And particularly with the new wide men we've got in the team who are very good going forward but perhaps not the best defensively. I feel like just trying to play on the front foot and try to play a positive brand of football might be the way to go. Anyway, you can see Vidra's going to go on loan to Nice. I think that's a good deal for us. Um, the reason for loaning him out is just to get him out of the, the squad that's registered. Um, because, as I mentioned, we are kind of right up against it. And I feel like between Chris Wood, uh, Ashley Barnes, uh, Caicedo, and also Fernando Torres, of course, I feel like there we have four goal scorers, and Vidra just isn't as good as any of them. I will say now, it's unusual for me not to have a kind of super speedy striker in my team. I'm someone who traditionally likes to have a faster player. What we've actually got is a strike force with an average age of 30, which is like mad by my standards. If you've watched my series ever on YouTube, you'll know that I like to kind of just focus on the youth and like plan for the longer term. We do not not have longer term and we do not have money to bring in, you know, really good striking prospects. So we're just looking for value in the market. I feel like we've achieved that so far here. So hopefully that's going to be continuing on today. We start off with Southampton at home, by the way, a game that we could really, 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 really do with winning. Of course, it is the January transfer window. We do have some money to spend. With Vidra leaving, that does leave us with one spot in our team if we want it. And, well, of course we want it. It's, uh, it's a bit of a stupid if, isn't it, really? In terms of what we need, we probably need a centre mid. Now, um, obviously you can see here, players who are uh, aged 20 or younger on the 1st of the 1st, 2018, don't need to be registered. So... For example, if we just look at the transfers we've got coming in, Woodburn, we don't need to register. Sample, we were looking to bring in, but I don't think he's the midfield solution. So we have the ability to bring in one player kind of over the age of 21. Do I want to make Brugman that centre mid? Is he good enough to be that centre mid, or is there better options out there with the money we've got left over? We have £9.7 million in the bank. Palmy feels like there must be a better centre mid. There just must. There's, there's no way there isn't. But it's it's my job to find them, maybe, and then convince them that we're worth their time. Hmm. I know that we looked through some of these players a few episodes ago. Well, not a few episodes. Well, it was in the last few episodes. I think the reality is that nine million pounds in modern football doesn't go as far as I'd like to believe it can. So whilst all these players I kind of look at and go, oh, these could be good. The, the reality is that I can't bring, well, I can't bring in the player as good as some of these that I want to bring in. I'm kind of happy with our starting centre mids. I feel like Ashley Westwood and Jeff Hendrick, whilst not the craziest centre mids, as a pairing, they're good. My concern comes with the fact that we have Defor and then we have Sammy and they're kind of the two backups. Sammy, I love. The hair's great. I mean, it makes me happy every time I see it. If anything, it's been a morale boost in the dressing room, I think, his hair. Of course, we're looking to bring in Woodburn on loan, who can play centre mid. And because he's below the age of 20, we don't have to worry about registering him. I am just wondering if there's more players loan listed who we should be looking at. Who have an age at most. I mean, could, could we just rely on loans? Is that a mad idea? You know, it's not like Joe Willock going to be just worth our time as a backup centre mid option. I mean, given the current injury situation, it might not even be the worst idea. The only issue is that we can't really afford his wages, although we can rejig things around just a little bit to help cover it. So suddenly it is an option. Even if he never plays for us. Even if he never plays for us, it's only £15,000 a week. For a good little backup centre mid. I think I've just selected and said that we'll play him as a starter. Which is a bit of a lie. But if it makes him more likely come, to come to us. I, I'm, I'm willing to do it. I can't be taken to court over it. So it's fine. Hmm. And we, we, there's also this guy. Oscar Burr. I mean I need a backup right back. Who can actually play as a wing back. But coming to Wolverhampton Wanderers. I'm relying on one of their players. Is that a stretch too far? Possibly. I assume there's no players who are under the age of 20 who are transfer listed. There's a few, but they're, they're not great. 
What about just players under 20 in general? Are there any really good ones here who our scouts look super highly rate? Because any of these players, we wouldn't have to register. The stumbling block really is I need them to be able to contribute to the first team now. And the kind of fees that I imagine that teams are going to be looking at for these players is probably a little out of our budget. You know what? I feel like we've added enough already to the team. If we can get in the few low knees that we're looking at, I think we'll be in an okay spot. You know, it's kind of unusual. With the Bomb at Christmas Challenge, sometimes you're strapped for cash, whereas we've had we've been given money to spend. Now, granted, we've only spent £15 million, pounds, you know, since, since we came in in January, which when you look at the transfer fees of some of the, you know, teams in the Premier League have paid this year to try and stay up, that's not that mad. It's a bit tragic in a way, but you think... Of, I can't think of a better example, so I'm going to have to use it, but you think of Salah uh, going from Nantes to Cardiff for £15 million. Pounds. You know, Premier League survival is massive to teams to the point where they will pump big money in to try and kind of stay up. And, you know, teams even like a Cardiff, which I mean in the most just nice possible way, but what I mean by that is a team newly promotes the Premier League. If they think there's a chance of survival and they can go for it, they are willing to, you know, to sanction big transfer bids to get the players in. Anyway, we've signed Brugman here. I think he's a good signing. I think as a centre mid, he's, he's another player in the team. He's a player who likes, con you know, he's consistent, likes big matches. And I feel like he's, you know, he's kind of the jack of all trades, master of none. And in terms of just adding strength in depth, he does that, which is almost the biggest box to tick here. Because when we joined, we had three centre midfielders. It's a real shame that we're without Jack Cork, because between him and Jeff Hendrick, you'd have kind of an ideal partnership. And he is kind of just a, clearly a key player at the team, but four to seven months out injured. I mean, he will be fit at some point. Is it worth registering him, knowing that he might be fit for the end of the year? I mean, four to seven months is a big period of time. Say he's back in mid-April. He's only going to be back for the last four games. And that's if he recovers quickly. I just, I don't, I think for the sake of making sure we have, you know, uh, foot players that are fully fit, I can't really sacrifice a spot for him. Which is a bit of a shame because Jack Cork is exceptional, but that's the kind of reality of things here. But no, I feel like now I'm happy with my transfer business. I don't think we're going to be doing a lot else. But you look at it here. We've got in Caicedo. We've got in Andy. We've got in Sammy, Pione, Sisto, Hernani, Fernando Torres and Brugman. Not really had to strengthen the defence a great deal. I feel like we're going to have to chance things without a backup right back and just hope and pray that um, Lowton can stay fit. I mean, is it worth just bringing in that Wolverhampton Wanderers lad on loan? That's what I'm now I'm now questioning myself. I mean, is it worth just looking? What young right-backs are there? I mean, the reality is now we have £3 million to spend. It's, it, it's not really enough, is it, to bring in a player who's good enough to just start in the Premier League week in and week out. See, someone like Max Ahrens would be a fantastic signing from Norwich as that backup player, but I feel like they're going to want way too much money. Yeah, for, I don't think we have kind of £18 million lying around for him, unfortunately. Jaden Boggle could be an option from Derby. He's very good. Wow, I like the look of this guy. Again, though, I feel, feel like the stumbling block is going to be how much Derby want. Hmm, they don't want as much as I thought, but he's kind of out of our budget for this year. I could put in some clauses. There's also this guy who plays for Lech. In uh, Poland, but he's, he's not quite good enough. You know what? I might have to take a punt on this guy, Jaden Boggle. Of course, just as a reminder, the reason that we're looking at these younger options is because, um, well, f frankly, we have to. We don't we don't have, um, you know, the spots in our squad to actually be able to, you know, have players over the age of 20. And really here, I'm looking for a backup player. Oh, I've got an Xbox controller plugged in, so I've got the Steam Big Picture overlay coming up again for me. Right, let's try an offer here. I'm going to offer them £2.5 million immediately. In 12 months, we'll give them £2 million. And if he plays 50 league games for us, we'll give them another £2 million. 
that's a deal that kind of structurally I think makes sense for an 18 year old young English talent now we've just got to hope that he's willing to join us he wants a relegation release clause in his contract of 18 million and a yearly wage rise and he also wants to be a rotation option I mean he knows what he wants we'll wait for the scout upon him but I think he would be the ideal solution at right back pay him five million pounds over you know a year basically and then a little bit more money if he does go on to become that regular first team player for us we've been rejected by ben woodburn which is a concern and now ben mee's got injured i mean the the injuries are a problem here at burnley i was thinking that we were you know through the worst of it you know we'd got through the real fixture congestion which was actually my main concern when we took over here but it feels like it's just not stopping but anyway, it's taken us a while to get to today's Southampton game, but I feel like I am now happy with my transfer business that we've done. If we could get in Boggle, that would be ideal. But, uh, well, Southampton in 10th is not an easy game. It's just not. Right, we're going to delay this, but I, I like the like of Jade, and I think he could be a good backup right back for us. But yeah, at home against Southampton in 10th, given the fact that we've just beaten Watford, I'm optimistic that we can, you know, string a little run of results together. That would be kind of the ideal situation right now. With me out injured, it's going to be Ben Gibson who comes in, I think, at centre-back. A very, very capable centre-back. The me injury is bad, don't get me wrong, but in terms of all the positions we could have injuries in, it's the area where I feel like we're most equipped to deal with it. I'm just wondering if I'd rather have Gibson or Kevin Long play. Long is a lot, lot better defensively. Is Gibson left-footed? He is. I thought he was because he could play left-back. I'm assuming Long is right-footed. He is. I think that is what's going to sway it for Gibson. There's not a great deal between them. With me now out, I think we'll be picking that left centre-back position largely off form. Given how well we did last game, however... I think I'm going to go with a very, very similar team to the team that played the last match. I mean, the only change we'll make is we'll take out Sammy. Actually, how does Sammy compare to Def 4? Let's just let's have a look at this. De Def 4's better. Sammy's a good backup, but um, he, he's not good enough. But we've got Brugman now in the team as well, who if we just compare him with Sammy, you can see here, uh, perhaps not as good defensively, but just in terms of kind of well-roundedness, he is just a better player at 26. So I think we'll have him waiting in the wings. Westwood's had some really, really rotten form lately. I almost want to play Def 4 to start, but he's lacking a bit of match sharpness. Could bring in Brugman to play the defensive midfielder position. He's got 11 tackling. His marking and position is just a little bit too low, I think, for my liking. We brought him in to be the box-to-box -box midfielder. I feel like that's where we're going to see him operate. But no, I think we're going to keep faith in the team that you know performed well last game. So we're looking at Hanani on the right and Andy on the left to shine for us. We're going to play in the front foot. We're going to play attacking. It's going to be the Wood-Torres partnership. What dreams are made of. And let's try and get another win. We're six points away from safety still. We are not particularly close to safety here. Southampton are seventh place in the form table. So they're doing okay. They're tenth in the league as well. This is not a game that you'd expect us to win if we were any other team bottom of the table. But Burnley are a good team. We have a good squad. We've invested a little bit into it. And that investment does show in the first team. The issue we've got really is that we've brought in a fair few new players. But we don't have time to gel. We need them to hit the ground running. And while we have a chance here, Hanani with the assist. I mean, Hanani might be the signing of the season. Joined us from Porto, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a sweet left foot on him, the right midfielder. Whips it back post to Tarkovsky, who's just completely unmarked. The dream beginning for us, of course. We've tried playing conservative play. We've tried playing defensively. We're now trying to play more attacking, and it's worked well early on here. That is a poor corner as well. It's gone all the way to Hernani, who gets it forward. I mean, is that Torres chasing? Has Torres lost his hair since he went to Japan? Apparently so. Alex McCarthy now to boot the ball up for Southampton. They have very pacey players and very good offensive players in the final third. I mean, that was a bit good, wasn't it, by Nathan Redmond? I used to watch Nathan Redmond play a lot when he played for Norwich. Never never saw him finishing anything like that. We, we go back to 20th. We weren't bottom for a second. 
I mean, when you're shouting that, it's it's a sad time, isn't it? But yes, Redmond, he tucks it into the... It's a good goal. 14 for the season. Interesting, he is actually playing as a striker as well. That's kind of a new position that he's learned to... Well, start playing more regularly in real life this year. More traditionally a winger. Okay, another set piece. Hanani, you've shown us once how good you are. He goes to Tarkovsky. Can we get the rebound? And we can't. It's just about hat to clear. We're looking good from the set pieces. Oh, that's so close to going over the line. But the fact we're looking good from set pieces is very good news as far as I'm concerned. You can see Southampton have just had that one moment of brilliance. They are playing a very defensive kind of counter attacky system. They've got another chance here. Ward Prowse scores. I mean, is that their second shot of the game? After 40 minutes, they've been clinical from range. I guess you would describe it as. That is very, very unfortunate, it feels like. Ward Prowse. Tommy Heaton gets a good hand to it, but he can't keep it out. And we were leading this game. We're now losing it. And I don't feel like we deserve it. Westwood's picked up a booking. You know what? I'm going to bring in... Um, I'm going to bring in Def4. We need him to build up some match sharpness. Westwood's been pretty poor with his form lately. Um, I mean, his, his description is defensive midfielder for Def4. Maybe that's what we were lacking. You know, I'd be, I'm kind of joking around here because Westwood's listed as a midfielder. But we were lacking a bit of defensive steel, perhaps, in the midfield. Maybe he can be the man to get it for us anyway. Andy on the left side switches to Lowton to now Hanani. Got an assist earlier. Look at him run. Tackled away. Torres has been quiet today. He set the bar high. Not again. Surely not. Danny Ings is through. The former Burnley man perhaps sparing us a little bit. Now we have a set piece. Hanani back post. Ward Prowse heads it clear. But only as far as Tarkovsky puts it back in. Woods there. He's offside. He's Stop celebrating everyone. Chris Wood denied. Was it offside? Oh, I'll tell you what, I don't think the line's in the right position there, but it, it it was close. Close is the best way to describe it. Remains 2-1 here. What can we do? Torres to Jeff Hendrich. We've got Kai Sado on the bench. He's, he's waiting for the nod. Can, can we press high here? It's good effort by our players. Gibson wins a header. Needs to make sure he gets goal side of Redmond, I think that is. Nice tackle by Jeffy Hendrick. Look at the Irishman go. Can we have a bit of the look of the... Uh, no. no. We Can we have a bit of the look of the Irish dancer? It was fairly brutal there, wasn't it, really? Southampton with the ball deep in their own half. They punt the ball once over to Redmond with pace. He's already scored one. We've been warned. It's a great block by Benny Gibson. This has been a match full of chances. It feels like Southampton are really hitting us on the break. I'm going to switch to positive as our mentality. That should mean that we are just a little bit more, not defensive necessarily, but we won't overcommit men going forward and perhaps leave ourselves as exposed on the counter. Or at least that's the thinking. Anyway, we, we've got changes to make. I'm going to bring in Brugman for Hendrick. And Andy's had a poor game out on the left, so we'll bring in Robbie Brady, I think, with our last change. We're still looking at Chris Wood and Fernando Torres, the dream duo, to try and rescue us something here. I do feel like we've been unfortunate in this game. Southampton have been very, very clinical. I mean, the issue is time is not on our side here, and there's going to come a point, and that point has kind of come now where I do need to go more attacking. But we're always going to leave ourselves exposed at the back here when we do this. Is that Gibson? You've got to win the race here. Don't get bucked either. Good tackle. I, w I was maybe starting to panic a little bit internally there. For some reason, it switched to full match. Thank you, game. Thank you. I don't know what I did there to make that happen. There's 10 minutes left. Okay, we've got a chance, maybe. We're starting with the ball in possession. But it is in our own half. I can't work out if that's a net gain or a net loss. Anyway, Robbie Brady on off the bench to win it. Torres is there. I mean, go on, Fernando. Go right. Hanani, use your pace. There's options. There's lots of them. He puts it in. Wood can't get there. Death for to Charlie Taylor. Go wide. Brady. What's he going to do? He hits it. It's not far wide. I can't really knock the effort. 
time is just trickling away. We've done all our subs. We've demanded all that we can from our players. I think we're going to fall 2-1 here. We were winning this game. We were leading. We looked okay, but it means absolutely nothing because we're not going to get anything from it. I mean, reasons for optimism. I feel like we were... I don't want to say we were the better team because Southampton did have two clear-cut chances, but I feel like we were more than a match for Southampton in this game. Southampton were predicted to win. Good news for us is that everyone around us hasn't really done a great deal. In fact, looking at it, we're closer to safety than I realised. I thought we were six points off. We're actually only four points off Huddersfield. I'm not happy, boys. Not happy at all. So our next game is... is um, it's not Wolves, it's Watford. And it's Watford in the FA Cup. It's the fourth round, so it's not a bad place to be in, but... It can't really be my priority here. I mean, a win would always be good for confidence, but I don't know. I feel like I need to focus on the league situation, you know? I need to focus on that. That's We've got to stay up this year. You know, getting to the, no one's going to remember that year we got to the FA Cup fifth round. People would remember the year we got relegated. And also, we do have a league game just a couple of days after it. I think that might be scheduled so soon after because of all our Europa League football that we've got going on. If I'm not mistaken, we've got Real Betis back to back. So that's going to be tricky for us. The only good news about those two games is that we don't have a match in between. So that's kind of fortunate. There's a player here called Pedro Podro. I mean, he looks pretty good. He can play right back as well. Wouldn't need to be registered. Okay, his minimum release clause is £45 million. I feel like Jaden is a better option at right back for the price because he's young and English as well. I feel like we've added some continental flair with Burnley, you know, a team that is mainly built up of British players. I've come in, we've added a bit of diversity to the team. I'm hoping that that experience from afar is going to be able to come here to England and save our bacon and, and translate to performances on the pitch. You can see the Carabao Cup final is going to be West Ham versus Tottenham. We've got Joe Willock in online. We don't need to register him. So he's another body in the centre of midfield. Now, I did tell Arsenal that he was going to be a first-team player. I have lied there, Arsenal. He's a backup. I'm, I'm sorry. I can already tell... There's going to be angry phone calls in a couple of months' time when he's not been playing a lot for us. Anyway, transfer deadline's in a week, but I think our business is kind of all done. Looking at it here, Jaden, consistent performer, young, English. I like the look of this guy a lot. I've not actually heard anyone talking about him. If you have used him in FM this year, please let me know how good he is. He looks pretty good, doesn't he? Anyway, we can sign him. It's going to be 2.7 million uh, could arise to 6.5. We're actually going to pay a guaranteed £4.5 million for him with a possible additional £2 million if he plays 50 games for us. But he just adds you know, another body in our team, a good little backup right back, and the fact that we don't need to register him is just a bit of a bonus. It's also dawned on me here that we don't actually have Bardsley registered for the team, so I really did need a right back. I'm trying to work out now, with that final transfer deal done, am I happy with my kind of team? Also, Sean Dyche has just gone to Brighton. I mean, that that's like going to come back to haunt us, isn't it? We're going to be... Brighton are in 18th, led by Sean Dyche, the man whose job we took. I mean, that, that it's like a soap opera, isn't it, really? It was in the script. And, uh, well, if it comes down to a game against Brighton, it could be spicy. We have got a really tough run of games coming up to the point where, man, Wolves is going to be hard in 10th, Everton in 6th, Tottenham in 13th for struggling, then Liverpool, Chelsea, Palace. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to panic, but I am concerned that we might not last till the end of March in the job, depending on how badly things go here. We've got a really tough run of games where you're going to need to grind out some performances. So I think we're all done in the transfer market. What I'd quite like to do is settle on a best 11. In terms of when we're fully fit, what is the team I'm going to play week in and week out? 
Because once I've decided that, I will save that as our best 11 and kind of plan things out from there. Obviously, we have got a few players injured right now, which changes things a little bit. But in terms of when everyone's fit, what would we do? Let's just think about this. I mean, it'd probably be Sisto on the left, I feel like. Would I just play Hanani on the right? Given how we started the season, I almost and started this time at the club, I almost am tempted to play my head of Goodmanson. How do the two compare head to head? Hanani's just a bit more technically gifted. Gamunson might be better in games where we need a little bit more of a defensive display. Uh, how would I approach things here? That's the question. Would I have Casado and Barnes both play? I don't know how to feel about Barnes. I feel like those two are the two guys kind of fighting it out to be second in command. But then Andy can also play centre mid. Hmm. Do I like Defor? That, that is another question. How how much do I like him compared to Brugman? I feel like more often than not we're going to need to bring on an injection of pace and creativity rather than a defensive player. Then we kind of get that in Andy already. I'm feeling like Andy might be the man to miss out, which I feel bad about in some ways, because he did score against us against Plymouth. <laughs> when you say it aloud, it, it, it just sounds more ridiculous than it does in your head. But I think this right now, this is our best 11. I will apologise today. Today's been one of those kind of over episodes for me, where I'm just kind of thinking about things a lot. Which I think is good. Sometimes it's good just to have a not. A th you don't want to overthink things, but just kind of you know double, ch kind of double check things over, think things over twice. Is kind of what I'm trying to say. But yeah, we're going to play a rotated team here against um, Watford. I think just because I I'm not as bothered about this competition as I am about staying up. We will still, you know, have some good options on the bench, I think. You know, players we can bring on to change the game if we need to. But at the same time, my focus remains elsewhere. And I want to make sure that we're fully fit for the game in three days' time. So this is the team we're going to go with. Giving a few of the newer players a chance. Gamunson coming back from injury, a chance for him to build up some match fitness and impress me. Players here who we've not really given a chance in the league so far. If any of them have a super standout performance against Watford... Maybe, just maybe, they can force their way into our first team plans. But, well, we beat Watford before in the league. Let's see if we can beat them again. Beat them twice in the space of two weeks. That would be ideal. A chance maybe to build up a little bit of confidence with a win. If we lose, though, it's not going to be the end of the world. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. The fourth round of the FA Cup, sure. It'd be nice to get to the fifth. But with our fixture congestion and the fact we're in the Europa League... It, um, yeah, it, it, I've already said my piece, haven't I? It doesn't matter, this game. This is a chance for a few players to prove their worth. It's a chance for players like Barnes and Casado, just to, uh, or Caicedo, I'll get there eventually, just to, just to show their worth in the team. Show me that, you know, they can score goals, that they could be the impact player we need on off the bench. But, yeah, we're, we're kind of playing the longer game here, I feel like, with this match. One other thing which perhaps is worth just looking at is just how our tactic works as well. You know, we are adapting a system that I already had. I kind of thought, you know, we might play inverted wingers as a starting point when I first came here. But when we had Goodmanson and Brady, our options were a little more limited. So you might remember to begin with, we were kind of looking at an asymmetric 4-4-2. With the additions of Sisto and also of Hanani... I feel like we're in a lot better position now where we can actually play kind of a um, symmetrical 4-4-2 in terms of having the same roles on each wing. And I'm, I've, I've become a bit of a fan of the inverted winger. It's a role that's been in Football Manager for the last few years. I've only prior to this used, this used it on the Norwich save. I've never really had the players to do it, but with the budget that we were given by the board, I was able to go out there and buy the players to play the system I wanted to play. 
And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it can play out with a slightly, you know, different team here and a team that I feel like in Burnley should should be, at least theoretically, a good 4-4-2 team. He says as Thomas cleverly scores. Is his name actually Thomas or is it just Tom? I don't know. And answers on a postcard, but yes, they have scored there. Watford just kind of hitting us on the break. Delafeu, loads of players queued up here. Maybe we are overcommitting a little bit in the attack with this system. We are playing with the fullbacks on attack. You know what? Let's just try those on support. We did get caught a little bit out, um, obviously, in our last game against Southampton on the break. So maybe just having our fullbacks on support will help us just maintain a little bit more of a defensive shape. Additionally, because unlike you know the original Arsenal system that played positive, we are playing more attacking. Being on the support duty, the wing-backs are still going to get forward quite a lot. Or I shouldn't use wing-backs to convert, confuse things, but the attacking full-backs. Anyway, Caicedo, what can he do? Hmm. I really hope that wasn't the highlight, but I have a big fear it probably was. Anyway, Gibson wins the header to Barnes now. What can you do, Ashley? Gamunson switches the play to Brady. Look at that. What a ball that was, by the way. Box to box. Ward to Brady. Options in the centre. Barnes is there. Takes a touch. Finishes it. It's his 11th of the season. I feel like most of those have come in cup games. But it's his first goal, if I'm not mistaken, with us at the helm. It's come against the run of play somewhat. But um, a nice little passing move. Brady, lovely ball in. Still plenty for Barnes to do. Takes one touch down. Is that Heraleo Gomez in goal? It is. I could tell. It looked like him in real life, kind of flapping around a little bit. Only 55 minutes gone here. For some reason, it feels like the game is way deeper than it currently is. Let's make some changes. I'm going to bring in Andy for Goodmanson. Brugman and Willock really haven't played too bad, uh, too well at the, ba uh, the back. We're going to move Brugman to box-to-box -box midfielder and bring in Sammy to be that centre mid on defend. Just really trying to freshen things up, I guess, in the midfield. Cleverly, a chance for his second of the game. Nice stop by Heaton. I'm just trying to remember, the FA Cup, they changed the rules, if I'm not mistaken, to avoid replays. But I can't remember at what point that kicks in. Or am I making it up? I feel like they changed the FA Cup rules. I don't know if this would go to a replay or if we just go to extra time or penalties. I mean, I say that. There's 14 minutes left. It might not even come to it. This has been a match devoid of quality. I think is the nicest thing you could say about it. Neither team's had a clear-cut chance. We've had one shot on target and it went in. We're looking for our second shot on target and maybe another goal. It's Brady on the left. Crosses it in. Where's Barnes? He's not there. Now with Kiko Firmina, if I'm not mistaken. He's bringing the ball forward. Is Kiko to Isaac's success. Switches the ball to Pereira. Can we stop him getting it into the box? Messina. To Will Hughes, the football manager legend himself. Now with Cleverly, he turns his man. Success is going to be through there. I'm not sure who tried to put in the tackle for us, but they were unfortunate in some ways. They got a toe on the ball, but it fell straight to Isaac's success. He was able to tap it home. A little bit of a disaster for our reserve team, this one, but we're not going to lose sleep. Who was it? Because I, I commend their bravery. Number 14, it was Ben Gibson. I'm not sure what he was doing there. He and Long are kind of bat battling it out for Mee's position in the team. Kiko's there. Heaton saves it. I mean, Gibson's got it away, I guess, this time. We're living life a little bit on the edge. You'd have to say that in this game, Watford have been the better team. Given the level of rotation, maybe that isn't entirely surprising. And in some ways, whilst I am going very attacking to try and get that goal... I am perhaps under my breath, smiling just a little bit, thinking, well, that is one less tournament to worry about here. Unlucky boys. We'll bounce back. We've got Wolverhampton Wanderers next. I'm hoping that they've played today. They have. They played Rotherham. They played Jimenez and Jota. So they might be suffering a little bit with fatigue. We've kind of played the long game here. We've kind of played things out by resting some players a little bit. I'm hoping that's going to come to benefit us. So we'll get Gibson onto the team here, now at left centre-back. He is going to need a rest going into this game in three days' time. So that's not a great deal of time to come back. Sisto, 
is still coming back from injury himself. I'm hoping he's going to be fit to make his debut against Wolves. He's been injured since he first joined us, but I do really, really rate Sisto, the young Dane on the left. We, of course, signed from La Liga. He had a very, very high kind of recommendation score from our scouts. I'm hoping that they were right. I mean, they seem to have come good when it came to Hanani so far. Apparently, Wolves might try and play a five at the back with a libero. I mean, I really hope that they play that now just so I can witness it in action. Where are Wolves in the league? They're in 10th. We're going to be at home against them. I mean, we really need a result in this game because our next few matches are going to be more than tricky. We've had an offer for Ed Cook of £8,500. I do not know who Ed Cook is. He's someone in our reserves who doesn't look that great. You know what? Eight grand, you can have him. Go on, then. Willock's out for one to two days. Bogle is out for one to two days. I like this guy a lot as a backup right back. Low-key, I think, I think we've done some good business there in the ten minutes of scouting and searching that it took to find him. Not too crazy or a fee involved as well, which is nice. But anyway, this is where things really matter. We're at home. We're bottom of the league. We're on TV, though. I mean, pe clearly people care about us. How much money are we going to make? 1.16 million for this. Oh, we, we can't attend our own game. I don't know why I clicked on that. I wanted to click on the Wolves team and see how they've kind of um, recovered. They're struggling a little bit. I still feel like they probably come into this game as favourites. We're going to try having our fullbacks on support and just see how that kind of serves us, I think. We are looking for our fullbacks to overlap, so they will still do that a little bit. Just wonder if we want to try and get the ball into the box a little bit more by maybe having the crosses hit in earlier. I'm also wondering about having Torres play on attack instead of support, just to give Wood, um, you know, a bit more of a partner in crime. Maybe leave him a little less isolated. I think this is the best team that we can field. I do. We've got good options though. You know, if we do want to change things up, we definitely can do that. Is Sisto fit to play today's game? He's lacking a lot of match sharpness. We are rushing him a little bit into the team. He's recommended to play 45 minutes. Is that too much of a risk for even me to want to take? You know what? We'll start Brady out on the left and we'll have Sisto on the bench, but we may well bring him in. Brady did play okay in the last game. You know, he did get the assist for our goal against um, Watford. So we might call upon him, but I think for now... We will we'll start Brady with a view to probably swapping him out for Sisto at half-time because Brady's not going to last the whole game, at least with good fitness, especially after the recent game that he was involved in. But the rest of our team comes into this game fresh and hopefully raring to go. That's the dream. I mean, if we lose this, we are in a pickle. We This is massive. You know, with the games that we've got coming up, we absolutely need a result here. Let's see what we can do. They do look like they are playing their very defensive system. Which I don't really know how to feel. Because it's clearly working for them. I mean, they're, they're 10th in the league for a reason. But I am wondering about having our fullbacks back on attack. Just because they're playing with a lone striker and kind of a five-man defence. They give the ball to Jota. who runs through on his own. I mean, Heaton, it's a good stop. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to switch our um, fullbacks onto attack. We're going to, we're going to go for it a little more. <sighs> I'm going to switch Torres to support, which might seem odd, but I feel like we might need him to drop into the gaps a little bit more of their team. It's going to be very crowded in the final third. I think a bit more movement from our attacks are having the deep line forward, you know, just start a little deeper and drop deeper a little bit more on the support um, kind of duty. Might just help us a little bit more. You know, maybe playing the support duty as he drops in. One of the centre-backs will follow him. That'll open up some space in behind. That's the thinking in my head. Whether or not that can translate to something here, we're about to find out. But this is what I'm looking for. For Torres to pick the ball up here. Ideally, I'd like this player that's just off-screen to be kind of sucked into kind of chasing after him. And that to create space for the inverted wingers to move into. That's how I want to envisage it playing out. 
Whether or not that's realistic remains to be seen. Jota, it's one big ball over the top again. He's clean through. Heaton to the rescue once more. How high are we playing our defensive line? It is quite high, isn't it? You know what? Let's drop it and let's remove the offside trap. Because it seems to be causing us some issues getting caught out on the break. Hendrick, can you get it clear? Hanani, Brady, that'll do. Right, we're playing a little more deeper now when we're out of possession. So I'm hoping that when we lose the ball, the defence will transition you know, to that deeper position sooner to stop these big balls over the top just looking so menacing for us to deal with. I'm not going to lie, I feel like a draw is on the cards in this game as long as we don't get hit on the break or, you know, abused from a set piece like this because of how many men they have back. But Willie Bot, I mean, that's a blooming good goal from a centre-back, isn't it? Bolly scored an absolute screamer for Wolves there. He's hammered it home. Oh, that's a problem because they're playing such a defensive system with five at the back. And it's going to be real tricky to break them down and they've made the most of a set piece. I mean, numerically and statistically, the game looks like it's been even. They've just kind of made the most of our opportunities where we've slipped up and maybe let them in on the break. There might be one last chance before half-time. Could it be for us? Lowton here, through wide, whips it in to Hernani at the edge. Have a go. Have a go. Oh, it's not far over. Not a bad effort at all, really. Narrowly, narrowly, narrowly over the crossbar. And, uh, well, it remains 1-0 here at half-time. Boys, show me something else. We need something more. And I'm looking for you to give us it in the second half. We need to do something to save our season. SOS. And it probably starts by getting a win here. Who has not performed? Brady's been awful. Get him off the pitch. Sisto, come in. Casado or Casido, we're going to bring you in as well. And you're going to play as a pressing forward on attack. Yes, we're, go we're going attacking. We're going to press them. I'm hoping we can cause them some issues in the final third with a pressing forward. Apparently, Willy Bolly is pulling the strings out there. I mean, that's concerning considering he's their right centre-back, who we got told was probably going to be playing no-nonsense centre-back. Just wondering if I want to change anything more here. You know what? Sisto and Hanani, higher up the... Uh, desperate times, folks. Des desperate times. We're looking at... Well, we need to do something, don't we? Sometimes you've got to switch to something that's completely untested and just see if it works. This is one of those times. I mean, it looks so mad. Maybe we can just overwhelm them in the final third. We've got one more sub. Chris Woods had an awful game. You know what? Barnes, come on as well. We're getting on a fresh striking partnership. I'm hoping that we're at least going to get a highlight with what's left of this game, considering the tactical changes we've just done. Committing men forward. It's only 1-0. There's, there's still hope. We've also switched Hendrick to Mazala, just because I wanted to get a little higher up the pitch, and I feel like just naturally Mazala is just sometimes more efficient at doing that than a box-to-box -box midfielder, kind of moving into the channel of space. It's 1-0 here. Time ticking away. Ruben Never set piece. I mean, we save it. Can we stop the rebound? We can. We need a goal, boys. I don't know where it's going to come from, but we need it. And there's literally no time left. And highlight immediately fills me with hope. It fills me with optimism. It's a big ball over the top. Barnes is there. Sisto, can you win it? No, you can't. Get a tackle in, lad. We've paid £7 million for you. I need you to be the difference maker. Blocked here. Now it's going to be with Bollison. Who gives it to Vinegar Jr. I don't know what the guy's name was. Vinegar sounds good, doesn't it? Helder Costa tries to get it goalwards. I mean, we do not look convincing here, do we? Oh my god. What is that defending? <laughs> oh dear. It's 2-0. I mean, we've rolled the dice there. We needed a 6 to get out of jail. We've rolled a 1. Wolves double their lead. I, I don't want to watch it again. The worst thing is we did actually create some stuff this game. It just wasn't quite enough. I just need to hope that we can maybe step, uh, step it up. 
in the coming games. But we've got Everton next, and we absolutely have to beat them tomorrow. Otherwise, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. And they're in sixth. You can see results around us haven't really gone our way. Brighton have won under Sean Dyche. We're five points off the drop with 14 games left. It's not impossible to turn around. But I am looking at our next run of games thinking, man, it's going to be a tough couple of episodes. We've got Everton, we've got Tottenham, we've got Real Betis twice, we've got Liverpool, we've got Chelsea, Palace in 10th, we've got Arsenal. I mean, really, I'm going to be honest, we're kind of looking at the last eight games of the season thinking that's the games where we need to try and get 18 points. And hope that that's enough. Hope that we can grind out results in those last games. But that's leaving it very, very late. And to be honest, we needed results against both Southampton and Wolves to give us the best shot at survival. And now we do find ourselves in a bit of trouble, don't we? Oh, man, that's really, really tough. We'll just play to the end of the transfer window here. I mean, we don't have any money left to do any deals. I've done my business. I need to hope that some of the players we've signed can can do us a favour, which they've not done so far. <laughs> it's tricky because on the one hand, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult now. On the other hand, I've got to keep going. I've got to keep believing. I've made a commitment here to get Burnley out of this rut. The thing is, I don't want to change the system too much. One of the things that's very easy to do in Football Manager when things really aren't going that well is to panic and just try and change things for the sake of changing them and it just kind of backfires spectacularly. I'm going to tell the players that I'm keen to show our heads don't drop. We've got the ability in the squad to change around our fortunes. I mean, it's a small morale improvement... We're not going to set the world alight with that morale, though, are we? We need to start stringing some results together. The only saving grace that we perhaps have is the fact that Everton did just lose against Man City 4-1. So maybe they're going to come in with slightly lower confidence. One thing that we should definitely do here before this next game is rest our 11 players who played. Just for two days. I want to make sure they're at full match fitness. I want to get a bit of stability in the team now bit of consistency with our team selection but it's gonna be tough especially with the Europa League as well I could really do without the Europa League in this next run of games maybe we'll get relegated but qualify for the Champions League through winning the Europa League maybe that's that's what we strive towards now I mean Wigan won the FA Cup that year didn't they and ended up in the championship I don't even know if that would be enough to save my job. Given the money that I was given by the board, they really did kind of back me to save them from this mess. And so far, I've not done a great deal of saving. It would be fair to argue here. But I don't know. Everton away is going to be tricky. Goodison Park is always, you know, difficult. And with deadline day here as well, you know, the, the fear is that the teams around us really start strengthening their teams. I mean, that was an uneventful deadline day would be the fairest assessment. I think I saw there that we were the most active team in the transfer window with nine players. Few additions made by teams in and around us, but no kind of super crazy ones. Our squad registration, I'm sorry, Phil Bardsley and Peter Crouch, but you're not in the team. And I know that's not going to go down well, and you might complain a little bit, but I feel like you are on your way out. Both of you. I'm sorry. I'll get you out, Phil. I'm sorry. Peter, what's wrong, mate? I'll find you a new club. I will find you new clubs, you know? You're not in the matchday squads. I don't... I mean, I'm not being funny, mate. You're like the fourth choice goalkeeper. Why would I include you in the, the thing? Why, why would I include you in the squad? I don't think he knows. If he can give me a reason, I'll let him stay in the team. But he's not going to be able to, is he? I mean, I'd like to give a shout out to our assistant. He's decided to give me a top transfer target the day after the transfer window closed. 
And a player who's definitely not within our budget in Everton of Gremio. As much as I'd love to sign him, I don't think it's realistic. Sammy is out for one to three days. I mean, please no more injuries. That is really the last thing we need right now. We need to stay fit. We need to stay ready and raring to go. Before we go today, because I'm not going to do this Everton game coming up. We're going to save that for next time. I do want to quickly do the Europa League squad registration. I hope that we're just going to be able to register an okay amount of players. I think we're limited in the number of changes that we can make. Yeah, we can have a maximum of three new players. So I have got to think a bit tactically about who I actually want to add here. Torres I've got to add. Hanani and Sisto. That's going to leave me very light on centre mids, isn't it? I feel like I need Hernani and Sisto in the wide areas, but then in the centre mid department we might be in some trouble. Man, the registration rules are rough. If we bring in Andy, he can give us coverage in the wide area. And he can also help us out in terms of he can play centre mid. That might be the best option. Tell you what's impressive, the fact that Burnley have zero homegrown players at club. That that is an achievement. And actually, that limits the registration rules even more. I mean, hmm. Man, I don't think we're going to go on a good run here in um in the Champions League. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that now. I mean, in terms of defenders, we're fine. In terms of attackers, we we might be in with some trouble. Peter Crouch wasn't registered previously, so I can't even register him for free in the team. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to have to go with Sisto and Torres, aren't I? Or do I not even register Torres? Do we just save his legs? Logically, it probably makes most sense to include a centre mid. So we'll go with Andy, I think. And the reason I say it's logical to kind of have another centre mid is just because we're going to need that kind of strength and depth. Shock as Bernie lives, leaves out star players. Look, I'm not being funny... I could literally couldn't include you. Fernando, I'm not sure what your decisions leave me out. Registration rules. I'll register you at the next opportunity. There's not going to be another opportunity. Who wants to break it to him? I'm hoping that we can just use the same talk we had with Torres. But we are just lying to these players and saying we'll register them at the next opportunity. When there isn't going to be another opportunity. Because I don't think we're going to be in the Europa League next year. Wait. Can you register players between stages of the Europa League? I feel like there's just one red window, right? I don't think stage to stage you can change the players that are registered. Because if I get through a round, I don't want to be in that situation. That's not going to be a good situation to be in, is it? Let's be honest. That could be a problem. But it's not a problem for today, which is the main thing. We'll, we'll think ahead to that after next episode where we take on Betis and work things out. But uh, we're going to wrap things up, I think, there for today. Um, I do hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. Not the results we were really looking for, but we're through January now. I need to start turning things around. I mean, we have two wins so far in our first eight games as manager. It's not ideal, and it's going to be a very, very tough February. We we need a miracle. We'll hope that we can get it. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the episode today. I understand that with this series, it must sometimes get a bit frustrating, spamming ideas and stuff in the comments and telling me what I could maybe do or what you'd be doing differently. Um, the, the stuff that I'd probably do differently if I could have it all over again. But it's all a bit of fun at the end of the day, this series. I really want to keep this Burnley side up, though. I genuinely believe it's possible. But we probably need to beat Tottenham and Everton. I mean, Tottenham are in 12th. That's winnable. Everton in 6th. It's winnable. It's actually the next few games after that against Chelsea, Liverpool and Arsenal. The top three we play in the space of four games. The episode after next is going to be painful, isn't it? Right. I'm going to wrap things up there, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Do drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed. And I will see you on the next one. It is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.